Thank you very much for tuning back in again. Here's the final part of the reading for the textbook reading for this part of the section and lesson. An upsurge in Chinese nationalism. Humiliated by their loss of power, many Chinese pressed for strong reforms. Among those demanding change was Chinese young emperor Zhang Zhu. In June of 1898, Zhang Zhu introduced measures to modernize China. These measures called the reorganizing China's educational system, strengthening the economy, modernizing the military, and streamlining the government. Most Qing officials saw these innovations as threats to their power, so they reacted with alarm, calling the Daoguer Empress back to the imperial court, and on her return, she acted with great speed. She placed Zhang Zhu under arrest and took control of the government. She then reversed his reforms, and Zhang Zhu's efforts brought about no change whatsoever. The Chinese people's frustrations with their situation continued to grow. The Boxer Rebellion This widespread frustration finally erupted into violence, and poor peasants and workers resented the special privileges granted to foreigners. They also resented Chinese Christians, who had adopted a foreign faith. To demonstrate their discontent, they formed a secret organization called the Society of the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. They soon came to be known as the Boxers. Their campaign against the Daogar Empress's rule and the foreign privileges was called the Boxer Rebellion. In the spring of 1900, the Boxers descended on Beijing, shouting death to the foreign devils. The Boxers surrounded the European section of the city, and they kept under siege for several months. The Daogar Empress expressed support for the Boxers but did not back her words with military aid. In August, a multinational force of 19,000 troops marched on Beijing and quickly defeated the Boxers. Despite the failure of the Boxer Rebellion, a strong sense of nationalism had emerged in China. The Chinese people realized that their country must resist more foreign intervention. Even more important, they felt that government must become more responsive to their needs. The Beginnings of Reform At this point, even the Qing court realized that China needed to make profound changes to survive. So in 1905, the Daoguer Empress set a select group of Chinese officials on a world tour to study the operation of different governments. The group traveled to Japan, the United States, Britain, France, Germany, Russia, and Italy. And on the return in the spring of 1906, the officials recommended that China restructure its government. So they based their suggestions on the constitutional monarchy of Japan. The Empress accepted this recommendation and began making reforms. Although she convened a national assembly within a year, change was slow. In 1908, the court announced that it would establish a full constitutional government by 1917. However, the turmoil in China did not end with these progressive steps. China experienced unrest for the next four decades as it continued to face internal and external threats. China's neighbor, Japan, also faced pressure from the West during this time, but it responded to its influence in a much different way. So as you guys can see from today's lesson and reading, it's pretty clear to understand why and how China's resentment to foreign powers and intervention would become uh, to be so tangible and so real to them. Additionally, by looking at the series of influence that many other countries tried to establish, one could also see how and why the Chinese were justified in their reasoning for outside world and influences as well. Only time would tell for China exactly how these events would come to define their future and their stances towards the rest of the world. Thank you very much for tuning in, and good luck with completing the rest of the lesson.